Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we are going over the top five reasons why you might want to avoid getting the Quest 3 or at least wait before you go and pick one up. Now, before the angry mob of Quest fans comes after me, please understand this is not a crap on the Quest 3 video. I have a very positive review up and I think it is a great device. So put your pitchforks down and hear me out for a moment. This is not a hype channel. The last thing I want to do is give you guys FOMO or buyer's remorse. I want to be straight with you, and I enjoy playing devil's advocate, arguing both sides of some type of debate. Now, even if you are a huge fan of the Quest 3, this is an important video because we can all discuss the issues with the current generation of hardware, and then Meta can make the Quest 4 even better for us. Now, there are, of course, some links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by my long term sponsor, Kiwi Design. Not only have we partnered together to give away a Quest 3, but Kiwi also has plenty of accessories for all of your favorite VR headsets. There's carrying cases, elite straps, link cables, controller grips, and many more products available. Plus, Kiwi has plenty of new products coming for the Quest 3 and other headsets. There's a link to both Kiwi Design and the giveaway down in the description. And don't forget to use discount code Mateo311 for 5% off and to help help support this channel. Okay, so one reason why you shouldn't upgrade to the Quest 3, at least not right now, is simply because you feel like you're missing out. I know FOMO is a real thing, and right now the Quest 3 is the new shiny item and everyone wants to get their hands on it, but you don't need to. You don't need to feel that pressure. In its current state, the Quest 3 brings almost nothing new to the table. There are no new titles or exclusives, and the games that have been updated to take advantage of the Quest 3 may look significantly better, but not to the point that it's actually a game changer. You'll still be playing the exact same games, and if you're bored of them right now, the Quest 3 is not going to change that. In fact, the only thing new on this headset is the included depth sensor and some additional mixed reality capabilities, but I'm not sold on this technology yet, and that is our second reason why you might want to avoid the Quest 3 for right now. The current iteration of mixed reality is a gimmick. And once that initial wow factor wears off, you're going to realize that these mixed reality titles are even more shallow than the VR games that people are still calling nothing but tech demos. This is very similar to where VR was in 2017, and I just can't get over the fact that Meta would push this new technology, but not give us any really cool software to back it up. As much as people are saying the first encounter of mixed reality experience is really cool, how long do you think you'll really play that for? The answer is you're not going to play it for very long at all. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's brand new. Give it time. And I understand that there's plenty of future potential from mixed reality and augmented reality, but it's not there right now. And that's a reason why you should maybe consider waiting. There's also the possibility that it doesn't get much better or that it's only really good for productivity apps or things like Piano Vision, which I think is quite amazing, but just not for everyone. Don't let Meta trick you into believing mixed reality is like this. It's not. Here it is in action. Security level escalated. Magazine depleted. Ophus forces, don't lose a spire. Hunt them down. We have a situation. We have a situation is indeed right. As you can see, that wasn't very riveting, but maybe that's not the best footage to use. It does get a bit better. However, another thing I hear is, well, sports games are great in mixed reality. It's really good to turn on boxing and not have to worry about punching the wall, which is a minor benefit, at least in my regard. Personally, I like to be fully immersed and seeing my messy room is going to take me out of that immersion. So it's a okay benefit, but I don't think it's something worth paying for. And that's our next thing. Remember, you are paying a premium to get access to mixed reality. This headset is 66% more expensive than the Quest 2. The image that Meta wants to sell is, well, you're getting what you pay for. You pay more, you get more. And respect to a Quest upgrade, absolutely. 
this is a significant upgrade from the Quest 2. However, you're paying for that tacked on mixed reality feature that you may or may not want. Now, on top of this added expense, if you're upgrading from a Quest 2, you also need to rebuy the vast majority of all your accessories. So you'll need a new Elite Strap or Battery Pack. Yes, there are some exceptions, but overall, the investment is just getting more and more expensive. Additionally, I think the 128GB hard drive is too small, just like when the Quest 2 launched with a 64GB one. If Meta follows suit like they did last time, in a year from now, they'll give us a 256GB model at the same price. So, another reason you might want to consider waiting a bit. Additionally, Quest 2s right now are on sale for dirt cheap. If you look on eBay, I know you might not want a used headset, but if you're really unsure about VR, getting into VR for 150 bucks rather than 500 plus is maybe a worthy investment. Newer games are definitely increasing in file size, so you can expect to get four to maybe 15 titles with 120 gigabytes. And if you go to 512, the upcharge is insane. That's an additional $150, putting this headset at 650. Now, in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to VR, I will admit that $650 is still relatively cheap. People have spent much more to get a good VR experience. So I do acknowledge that, but we're talking about the Quest 3 and its relative investment right now to people upgrading or to people buying their first VR headset. Now, besides waiting around for a 256 gigabyte model, which may never actually come, there are some other potential alternatives that might be more suited to you. Now, if you're only interested in PC VR, the Pico 4 already gives you basically everything the Quest 3 has at a cheaper price. Plus, there's also rumors of the Pico 5 coming next year. And if they follow suit with what they did last time, it'll basically just try and one up the Quest 3. Now, hanging out in rumor territory for a little bit longer, Supposedly, we're getting a new Quest headset next year that'll be significantly cheaper, maybe as low as $200. Now, it might just be a mixed reality headset. So we'll have to wait and see, but maybe that's what you're after. Maybe a year from now, you don't want VR, you just want MR. Also, the Valve Deckard might be a 2024 product. So if you're big on the gaming side, that might be the headset for you. So once again, it might be worth just waiting a little while before picking up a Quest 3. And then again, what's the worst that can happen? The price drops over time. Now, the last issue is very simple and I can blast right through it. If you've already played PC VR and the Quest 2 and it really wasn't for you, there's nothing here that will change your opinion. You don't have to say, oh, well, maybe it's finally time. Maybe VR is finally there and I should get into it right now. Nope. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the Quest 3 that elevates VR to a new level that people who didn't buy into it in the past will want to buy into it right now. Now, I know that statement might be heresy to some fellow VR enthusiasts, but I am of the opinion that VR is just not for everyone. And I would hate for someone to force themselves to use VR and walk away saying this is a gimmick and giving all of VR a bad reputation. It's for some people. It's not for others. End of story. Now, I'm going to leave you with a bonus issue that no one ever really talks about. Unless you've tried a lot of VR headsets, one thing that might happen is the fact that there's a lot of subjective aspects to owning and using a VR headset. Remember, this is something that you wear and you stare into. So when you change from one headset to another, you might realize you have certain sensitivities you never noticed before. This might be things like the IPD, glare, historically issues like that. But when moving to the Quest 2, now, comfort is always a big one. So comfort is subjective and you might put this on while I feel like it's a lot more comfortable than the Quest 2. You might feel like, oh my God, this is unbearable. And that's frustrating. And then you, again, you have to go out and get a new strap for it. There's minor things like that. One that I haven't heard anyone talk about is the binocular overlap. So the FOV is larger on this headset. And in order to do that, basically what happens is the amount of the screen that you see on this eye versus this eye is reduced. Now, they have a significant overlap. Older headsets have a lot of overlap, but the Quest 3 and the Valve Index have a reduced one, and that's how they were able to increase the FOV. Now, I don't really notice it. I went to the Index. It didn't bother me at all. I can see it 
on the quest three at certain moments i can kind of see like oh wait i see an edge but then once i'm in game i don't really see it but i know some people it's driving them nuts and switching to a vr headset can kind of be like if you play sports someone gives you a new glove instead of your favorite glove or even worse it might feel like trying to throw with your non-dominant hand it could be a frustrating transition i just want you to be aware of this it's not a reason to stop because the majority of people will get past this issue rather quickly you know something that sticks out some but the opinions or the varying opinions i'm seeing on this headset are driving me insane some people are saying the fov difference is amazing others are saying they don't see it at all some people are saying oh my god this headset now has the mora effect and it's terrible i i honestly can't get over it and that's really comes down to your personal sensitivities and i just wanted to mention this it's not a real issue it's just you might have an adjustment period 99% of people will adjust, I think, in like a week or two. There might be that 1% of people where it just continually frustrates them and they want to go back to their old headset. And that was today's video, guys. I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know if you got a Quest 3, what do you think about it? Uh, if you agree with me on mixed reality, I know that's a controversial topic. Uh, if you're going to get a Quest 3, also don't forget to enter the giveaway, which is in the description. But yeah, I want all your feedback. I want to hear because it helps me, you know, get a grander picture of how everyone feels out there i know that the way i think is not always right and it might not even you know make up for what how 50 percent of the people feel but i'm going to give you guys my opinion which is based on years of experience with lots and lots of headsets i hope you guys appreciate that if you do thumbs up if you're new here consider subscribing and as always i'll see you guys on next time